Stock Market and Bond Market Indexes On the evening news, without a doubt, you will always see a report on the Dow Jones Industrial Average as a measure of how the stock market is performing. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is clearly the most recognized index, however, it is one of many. As international trade increases, it isn't uncommon to see reports on international indexes such as the Nikkei Average of Tokyo or the Financial Times Index of London. The Dow Jones Average The Dow Jones Industrial Average, known as the DJIA, or the Dow for short, is the most predominantly known stock market index. The Dow is made up of 30 large reputable corporations and has been computed since 1896. The Dow Average used to only consist of 20 stocks up until 1928. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was originally calculated as an average of the stocks included in the index. Since there are 30 stocks, it was calculated by summing up the value of the included stocks and dividing the sum by 30. The percentage change of the Dow Jones Industrial Average would then be the percentage change of the average price of the 30 shares included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Dow Index performs the same as if an investor built a portfolio that was made up of one share of each of the 30 stocks. The return on the investor's portfolio would be the exact same as the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The value of this portfolio is the sum of the price of the 30 shares. The Dow measures the return on a portfolio that holds one share of each of the 30 stocks and is based off of the price per share. Therefore, the amount of money invested is proportional to the price per share of stock. This means that the Dow average is a price weighted average since the average is computed by adding up the price of each stock and dividing it by the divisor, the number of shares, that is held within the index. Let's try an example of computing change and value of a portfolio that consists of stocks and the price weighted average index. Suppose we initially invest in ABC at $45, EFG at $30, and XYZ at $25. Stock ABC fell to $40, EFG increased to $35, and XYZ increased to $30. Now that we have our stock prices and the changes, let's calculate the price weighted average portfolio and the price weighted average index. So our initial value equals $45 plus $30 plus $25, totaling $100. Our value after the price change is $40 plus $35 plus $30, equaling $105. The percentage change in the value of the portfolio is 105 our price after the price change, minus $100, our, price, our initial value, divided by $100, which is our initial value giving us 5%. Now let's calculate the price weighted average index. The initial index value is $45 plus $30 plus $25 divided by three, since there are three stocks. That gives us an average stock value of $33.33. Now the value after the price change is $40 plus $35 plus $30 divided by 3, giving us an average share price of $35. Now the percentage change in the price weighted average index is $35 minus $33.33 divided by $33.33, also giving us a 5% change. Notice that the portfolio and the price weighted average index both have identical percentage changes. In the price weighted average index, the weight is given to higher priced stocks. You may wonder why the Dow Jones Industrial Average is around $17,000 in 2014. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is no longer the average price of the 30 stocks because of procedures for average changes whenever a stock splits, pays dividends of more than 10%, or when a company included in the 30 stocks is replaced. When events such as this take place, the divisor that is used to calculate the average of the 30 stocks is adjusted to leave the index unaffected by the change. Calculating the divisor of an index when a stock splits, stocks are replaced, and dividends over 10% are paid. 
The formula to adjust the divisor on an index after a stock splits is shown here. It's the price of each share after the stock splits divided by which stands for the divisor. And that gives us our index price before stock split. Suppose we have an index, same as the previous example, that consists of ABC stock at $45, EFG stock again at $30, and XYZ stock at $25. Therefore, our price weighted index is $33.33. Now let's suppose the EFG stock split and now the price per share is $15. If we were to simply recalculate our price weighted average using the same divisor, this would represent a false indication that the stock market had lost a considerable value. Therefore, we must make an adjustment to the divisor as to not affect the index. To do this, we would use the formula shown here and solve for D, the divisor. It's going to be the price of ABC plus the price of EFG plus the price of XYZ divided by the divisor equaling the average price prior to the stock split. So that gives us $45 plus $15 plus $25 divided by D equaling $33.33. .33. We rearrange our formula, and we have $85 over the divisor equals $33.33. When we solve for D, we find that our new divisor is 2.55, which will result in our price weighted average remaining the same even with the stock split. The divisor of the Dow Jones Industrial Average is always being adjusted due to events such as stock splits. Just as the divisor of the Dow Jones Industrial Average must be adjusted when a stock splits, it also must be adjusted when a stock is replaced as to leave the index average unchanged by the event. The composition of the Dow Jones Industrial Average changes every so often to reflect changes in the economy. Many of the large reputable companies that made up the original Dow Jones Industrial Average in 1928 no longer exist, even though during that time, they were the backbone companies of the industry. Standard & Poor's Indexes The Standard & Poor's Composite 500, known as the S&P 500 for short, is an index that better represents the overall stock market than the Dow Jones Industrial Average because of two main factors. Firstly, the S&P 500 is based on a much broader basis being composed of 500 firms. Secondly, it is a market value weighted index. This means that the weight given to each stock in the index is the percentage of the overall outstanding market value. Let's do an example using the stocks we used in our previous example. Suppose our index initially consisted of ABC stock at $45 per share, EFG stock at $30 per share, and XYZ stock at $25 per share. Now let's assume that the price per share of each company's stock changed. Stock ABC fell to $40, EFG increased to $35, and XYZ increased to $30. Finally, let's assume that the outstanding market value of ABC is $50 million, EFG is $100 million, and XYZ is $500 million. Unlike the price-weighted average, which gave more weight to ABC due to the higher share price, our value-weighted index gives more weight to XYZ since it has the highest market value. The percentage change of a value-weighted index is based on the change in the outstanding market value. Therefore, stock splits are irrelevant as they do not change the market value of a company. Both the market value-weighted index and the price-weighted index represents portfolio strategies. If an investor were to buy one share of each stock in the index, then their portfolio's performance would be tracked exactly by the index. Similarly, if one were to construct a portfolio based on the outstanding market share of each stock, their portfolio's performance would be reflected by the value-weighted index that it was based on. Investors can easily invest in index funds, which are mutual funds that hold shares proportionate to the index that they are replicating. For example, an investor could invest in an index fund that replicated the S&P 500. Investors can also invest in exchange-traded funds 
which is a portfolio of shares that can be bought and sold as a unit in the way that a single share of stock can be sold. Exchange traded funds, known as ETFs, are available in a broad range of industries. ETFs can track broad global markets or narrow industries. Standard & Poor's also publishes a 400 stock industrial index, a 40 stock utility index, a 40 stock financial index, and a 20 stock transportation index. Other U.S. Market Value Indexes The New York Stock Exchange publishes a market value weighted composite index that is comprised of all stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange also publishes sub-indexes that are even more broadly based than the S&P 500. These indexes are for utility stocks, financial stocks, transportation stocks, and industrial stocks. There is an index published by the National Association for Securities Dealers that is based on over 3,000 companies traded on the NASDAQ market. The most broadly based index is the Wilshire 5000 Index, which is a U.S. equity index that essentially includes all stocks traded in the U.S. despite the name Wilshire, equally weighted indexes. An equally weighted index is a stock market index that is calculated using the simple average of returns of each stock in the index. This type of computation of returns corresponds with an investment strategy of investing an equal dollar amount into each stock in a portfolio. This is different than both the price weighted average, which requires a portfolio to consist of an equal number of shares of each stock, and the market value weighted average, which requires a dollar amount to be invested in each stock to be equal to the market value of the stock in proportion to the value of the entire portfolio. Equally weighted indexes do not remain the same as the price of stocks changes. When the stock prices change, the amount of money invested in each stock is no longer equally weighted. For an investor to reset his portfolio, he would need to make some trades to rebalance the portfolio so that an equal amount of money is invested in each stock. Foreign and International Stock Market Indexes Just as the United States has financial markets, so do other countries. But these foreign markets are also indexes. Some of the most well-known foreign financial market indexes are the Nikkei in Japan, the FTSC, known as the FTSE, in the United Kingdom, the DAX in Germany, the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, and the TSX in Toronto. Morgan Stanley Capital International, MSCI, is a leader in the construction of international indexes, constructing indexes for over 50 countries along with several regional indexes. Here is a list of stock indexes calculated by Morgan Stanley Capital International. Bond Market Indexes Just in the way that the stock market has stock indexes to measure the performance of the stock market, so does the bond market. The three most commonly referred to bond index groups are those of Barclays, previously Lehman Brothers, Solomon Smith Barney, part of Citigroup, and Merrill Lynch. The bond market is made up of six sectors, treasury bonds, government-sponsored enterprise bonds, corporate bonds, tax-exempt bonds, including private purpose tax-exempt bonds, mortgage-backed bonds, and asset-backed bonds. A problem with these indexes concerning a reliable source of measuring returns is that bonds trade infrequently. Therefore, it's hard to get up-to-date reliable bond prices. Bond prices can be calculated using some bond valuation models. However, they may result in bond prices that differ from the bond's true value.